okay. Oh. All right. So you guys can clearly see I'm hurt. I'm upset. I'm in. I'm in pain, man. Like I, I just. I, I've been in pain every day for five years, dude. And I've, I've tried my best to move on and like just not talk and not think about this and and resolve this in some way. And I've done everything behind the scenes, behind closed doors, and just. Uh, this is it, dude. Um, I'm not going to sit here and slander people. I'm not going to sit here and throw anybody under the bus. That's just not in my DNA. But I, I just got to tell you guys what happened in my life in this past five years and, and my career as a Call of Duty player. And I, I honestly could say I don't think there's ever been a person in this situation as me. And I hope you guys could just listen to what I have to say. And um, we're just going to get right into this. So throughout my life, I've always had big goals and dreams. Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to be an astronaut. Then I started growing up and I realized being an astronaut is really dangerous and you have to be really smart. And I didn't think I was smart enough to do that. So I said, okay, like, let me be a professional basketball player. I love basketball. Then I started growing up and I realized, you know, maybe, maybe not basketball. I don't know if I'll be tall enough. I don't know if I'm passionate enough about this. I had this doubt. So I, I figured, you know what, let me just move on from that. Let me try something different. Football came around. Let me be a professional football player. I'm really fast. I'm coachable. I'm quick. Uh, I'm, I'm down to do whatever it takes to win. I think that I could really fit into an NFL team as a cornerback or as a receiver. And then um, as I was playing football in high school, I got into Call of Duty professionally, and I was really good at it, and I was winning, and I won a national championship as a senior. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe all these years in high school where I missed all these football games and I wouldn't go to these tournaments and I would make up excuses and lie because I was too embarrassed to tell people I played Call of Duty for a job that uh, maybe football won't be the thing either. So let me take this money that I just won and put it to college and, and just try to like, I don't know, make something of myself. Uh, fortunately for me, I had some inheritance money. Both my grandparents passed away and I had some money and I had $12,000 from winning a tournament where I could take this money, put it to college, not have to worry about debt for the first year and a half or so. And then I'm going in college, I'm, I'm going through the days every day and, and I'm like, you know, like Call of Duty was fun, I just don't see a future with it. And then I see Nade Shot making a career and, and just doing all these big amazing things and he's like the face of this franchise called Optic Gaming and he's making all this money and he's just doing something really cool and I'm like, wow, he's doing everything that I wanted to do that I didn't think was possible and he just made me realize this is something that's possible. If he could do this, I could do this too. I know I'm good enough. I know I can learn. And uh, let me figure this thing out. Let me give this a chance for a year. So I leave college. I go back into Call of Duty. And I just know because Nate I never liked me. I never liked him. We always talked a lot of trash to each other back in the day, like years ago. Man, we're good now. We're, we're adults. But years ago, I just knew there's no chance I'd be in Optic Gaming. There's no chance I could follow his footsteps and do the exact same thing and be an Optic just like him. I had to do this for another team. It has to be FaZe. It was the first thing in my head. I'm like, I got to be in phase. So I come back to Call of Duty and Call of Duty Ghosts, right? I took a year off. I pick up Apathy. I pick up Dito. I pick up Saints. We dethrone the greatest Call of Duty team of all time in complexity. We beat them almost 6-0 in the grand finals. We beat them 6-2. We get the number one seed for chance. We get fourth. Uh, after the tournament, you know, FaZe Clan wants to pick me up with Formal and, and Saints and Proofy. And I'm like, okay, well, strictly business was great, but FaZe Clan is where I need to be if I want to make a career in gaming. If I want to make something of myself, I got to do it on a big team. Because I have big goals. I don't know what I want to do. I didn't know about YouTube. I didn't know about really like live streaming too much. But I just knew I had big goals. And I wanted to be around other people that had that same attitude. And it couldn't be Optic because of Nade. So I'm like, okay, I'll do it with FaZe. I'll be the rival. That's cool. Let's do that. So I get into FaZe Clan. You know, they, they wanted me on their team. And Proofy left for Optic. And I was only on that team because of Proof. So I called Tommy right away. And I'm like, yo, Temper, I just really want to know what you guys are doing. Because Proofy left. I'm only on this team because of Proof. If you don't want this whole second FaZe Clan team that you have... Just tell me right now so I know what I need to do moving forward. Like, I have no problems. I just want transparency. And Tommy looks right into the phone. He didn't look, but he says to me, Sensor, Doug, he goes, I want you to be my captain. And I never felt happier in my life. I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, it was like a huge sigh of relief to me. So we went to a tournament. Uh, Saints didn't show up to it. We go to another tournament, and we get, like, top 16. We make one roster change, and then we go to UMG Nashville late in October. Uh, make one roster change, and we're in a do-or-die situation. We're in the grand finals, first ever grand finals for FaZe Clan. We win the first best of five, six to five, last map, last round. We force the second best of five. We go down two to one, and, well, this is what happened. Broken dead. Nice combo. Bomb strip. One's bomb strip right now. Bomb bomb dead. Bombies going across, going across. No, you're fine, you're fine, you're dead. You're dead. Let's get through right, going A. I'm at A. I'm they're at rotating A. A, they're rotating A, I think. Go A, go A, go for the three-cap. I'm coming, right Chris, I'm coming, Chris. Top strip, top strip, shooting me. Stun crossing, Chris. Go One for dig, 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 dig the closet! Take the closet! Take the closet! He got me, he got me, he's closet. going back, he's going back! Nice, nice, let's do closet and back left! Nice, nice, back nice, left. nice, nice, back left, back left, parasite! Four nice, dead, go, go for come three on. Cap. And you can just hear 
Sensor is absolutely Sensor going crazy is right yelling now. yelling at his team to hop on the B flag. He's really the forefront of their communication right now. Good job by FaZe for gaining control for this last part of the map. Back and forth, only three point difference. Octane Dom, two minutes left. Denial wins, they're done. If FaZe wins, last map, S and D. And you see Senta wow. right there with a headshot through the wall on a replays. He's got one player spawning behind him, two players. Sensor just going off. When your submachine gun player is pulling off two pieces in the other team's base, getting that neutral over and over again. Even got the three cap. Unbelievable plays from Sensor right there, opening up the map for the rest of his team and just picking up easy spawn trap kills for the rest of the side. So I'm actually against the wall. It was a do or die moment. And I was telling my teammates this entire tournament, I know I'm not the greatest player. I know I'm not a dashy or a crim six or a scum, but I know I'm valuable. And I know that I could make my teammates believe in themselves and believe in each other to win. And that's basically been the story of my life. And I stepped up for my team in the moment. We forced a game five. Game five happens and, and this is basically what happened. The both plays are right in front of right here. They're playing this trade perfectly, and sure enough, it's double sure team. Faze takes Faze, UMG. Faze is your UMG national Elgato 25K champions coming all the way out of loser bracket to win a game five against Denial in wow. the first best of five, taking the second best of five all the way to the end. Faze with an amazing performance all weekend, a team that Nobody really knew how they were going to perform coming in. It was do or die. All the money was on the line. Everything was residing on this one map. It was either you win and you're a champion, you lose and you're second. And I just kept telling my guys, listen, man, we've been playing Call of Duty for 12 hours today. There's no way we get in second place. I won't allow it. It's just not going to happen. I don't care who I'm playing against. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what your personal lives are like right now. In this moment, on this day, at this time, this is what we're doing and we're going to win. All right, we're gonna do this shit. And that's what we did. And and when that happens, it's the coolest thing in the world. And that's the reason why I love being a competitor. When you have a common goal with guys and you do everything you can and you focus and you prepare and things go your way, you get a little bit of luck and you win, it's, there's nothing that compares to it, man. I hope everyone gets a, a way of experiencing that feeling. And if you guys won championships, if you're successful in life, if you've done something, you know what I'm talking about. It's the greatest thing in the world. That matters to me more than anything. So. We win this championship for FaZe Clan, first ever championship. It was so awesome, it was so honorable, so happy. I'm like, wow, like now I can really make something of myself. I'm starting to pick up my, my YouTube channel, it's starting to grow, I'm winning on FaZe, right? Uh, a couple weeks later, we go into the first tournament of the new game, so half of our roster left. Uh, Karma wanted to go to Optic Gaming, Parasite didn't want to play with me and Apathy. So me and Apathy are forced to pick up two. We pick up Aix and Slasher, we go into the first event of the game. Uh, we play out the gaming in the grand finals. We go to our game 10. Same situation, just like a, six weeks ago, I want to say. And this is what happens. Sensor going to lead with some nades. He's trying to peek it. This is very risky for Sensor. And this is such an aggressive push on defense from Optic. It really is. They are not messing around whatsoever. Sensor's pretty much pinned in this corner. Slash is watching the flank. And look at how aggressive Optic are being. Aix, not really up to much. Sensor's going to go for the challenge. Not going to get the kill. Krim bolts in his back, trying to stay alive. Sensor's going to get him. Sensor, that's a huge kill on Krim6. Time is ticking away. And Sensor is just completely baiting out Optic Gaming here. The crowd chanting Doug. Shots going down, no one dying. Sensor backing up to some support. That was a huge play, but Slasher has gone down. That's Nature with the kill. Three versus three. Time is ticking. Oh, Sensor! He just got a kill up. Oh, by a second! Sensor! Unbelievable play! Valley's Nature, one of three. He's going to get the kill, though. 29 seconds left. Bomb down. Can he stay alive? Nature, no! Faze win the championship! Sensor, an unbelievable play. What a comeback! FaZe had to do it twice, two best of fives. It goes the distance all the way to game number five here in the championship match. And FaZe takes out Optic twice on the main stage to become our Columbus Open champion. When did Sensor get talent like that? Talk about a clutch two-piece when he needs it. First of all, he played that last round perfectly, Pucky. He was baiting, he was staying alive. He got the kill on Crim6. Then he baited out two other players and got an amazing two-piece on that bomb site. Unbelievable. Do or die moment. All the money's on the line. You're playing against three of the top five greatest Call of Duty players in the history of Call of Duty. I already dethroned Complexity. Optic Gaming was the second biggest dynasty, and now I beat them. And not only do I, I beat them, but I make the play to beat them. Like, you couldn't have wrote a better storybook in your phone or on a piece of paper, a script, whatever it is. 
And it was just amazing. And I'm like, wow. Like, I always believe that if you work hard and you really believe in yourself and you make your team believe in yourselves, then everything is going to work out for you. Like, I've done it now four times at this point in my life. I've won three events in the span of eight months. I won two in the span of six weeks. And everything that I've preached, everything that I believed in my life has always come to fruition no matter who I had around me. I've won with like 15 different players. It was always a different team. I never won with the same team twice. Uh, we always won with a different team. I did it in the most obscene circumstances. I had my teammate aches with the stitches in his thumb on no sleep coming from a hospital, beating the greatest dynasty of all time. You can't write these things, man. This is the reality. And now it's like, wow, I have so many ideas. I started my YouTube channel in July and now it's uh, late November right after Thanksgiving, and I'm now I'm starting to learn how to make YouTube videos. FaZe Clan is teaching me everything. They're telling me how to make YouTube videos, how to market yourself, how to promote yourself, how to do things, how to make things fun, entertaining, exciting. So I'm living in this fairy tale, and I'm like, wow, I can't believe what I just did. I can't believe I just destroyed one of the greatest, the greatest console player of all time, one of the top five players, and then I, I kill this guy, and then now we're winning, and we're beating the face of Call of Duty in eight shot. It's like, holy crap, like, wow, everything is working out for me. I am so fortunate, I'm so grateful, man. Like, this is amazing. And that same very night, I get face temper coming up to me in a hotel lobby, whispering in my ear, yo, Doug, we want to make Aix the captain. Like very quick, very subliminal. And I looked at him and I just knew in that moment, I'm not going to be on this team anymore. This, <laughs> they want to make Aix the captain. I'm not going to be on this team. So we go home to New York. I'm sitting in a room with Banks and Tommy. And I'm like, listen, like this, this is not sitting right with me. Like I've won you guys as your captain, your first two championships. I just did it in the span of six weeks with two completely different rosters. I, I totally understand like Aix is, you know, the greatest player now. He's the most winningest player. He's been the captain of all his teams. I have no problem like not being the captain, but don't let me get dropped because that's what he's going to want to do. I've known this guy since we we're 15 years old. He's not going to want me on the team. And Tommy whispers, not whispers. He says to me, if, if you want to be a good captain, you would step down and let him be the captain. And I just did not agree with that statement. I did not like that statement. I did not feel good about that statement because I knew what that statement implied. I, I knew it wasn't about being the captain. It was more so about giving Pat the power of the roster. And, um, and maybe Tommy and Banks just believed that Pat had the best mindset, which he wasn't in the best mindset at the time. He wasn't completely focused on the game. He wasn't the best version of himself. He would admit that to you. He would admit that to anyone. Pat was not in the best mindset the second he won that Columbus tournament. You can ask my teammates. You can ask him. You can ask people around us. He just was not the right guy at the right moment. And I was just on cloud nine because I'm sitting here winning these majors for phase, trying to grow this brand, trying to be something more than a Call of Duty pro player. And I see the reality happening in front of my eyes. And then it just gets snapped and taken away from me. It's not because I didn't play good in a tournament. It's not because uh, I, I said something wrong or I did something stupid. It's just because Pat aches. Like this one person, this one guy, Pat, like this guy just, this is the guy. This is how they feel. This is him because we need him. He's going to be the guy. He's going to be the one that's going to be the face of your franchise. He's going to do what Nate Shot does. He's going to make videos and content around this team. And he's going to make it the coolest thing in the world. He's going to win and he's going to do everything. Like I wanted to be that. And I knew I wasn't the best player, but I was damn good enough to win. And it really just rubbed me the wrong way. And I didn't like it. But FaZe gave me a second team, fortunately. But it was too late because all the rosters were set. It was right before Call of Duty Champs. And I'm forced to play with... Uh, just scrap players, right? Like I have no opportunities of, of having success. Like I even offered a Tatch before he won that world championship, $5,000 of my own money before I even had a big YouTube channel, before I even had sponsors or anything. I offered him five grand of my own money to play with me, to buy, to pay for his buyout because I believed the Tatch was going to be a great player at champs. And it turns out he was the second best player behind Clayster and they won the world championship. I, I just, I just knew that that was a player I needed and I did everything to make it happen. And I just couldn't get enough good players around me for attached to want to play with us because I was forced into a situation where I'm not going to have success. And now I'm not on the phase team because our team isn't good. Uh, we don't make it into the league because the team isn't good. And I'm just sitting here looking like some chump, looking like some scrub when like two months ago, I'm sitting on cloud nine, beating the best players in the history of Call of Duty who are still to this day formal, just won last year in Black Ops 4. Crim6 and Scump, again, on a different team, just won in Black Ops 4. Same exact guys today, five years ago, I was beating them, destroying them. And I'm sitting here like, wow, I was just at the top of my game and it just all got ripped away from me for, for an explanation that didn't even like make any sense. It wasn't even like clear cut. It didn't it, there was nothing about this that made sense and it just didn't seem right. Nothing set right. Nothing felt right. It just didn't make any sense to me and I'm just so frustrated. And every single day, I'm just wanting to be on this FaZe Clan team. I'm watching them practice every day and I just want to be them. I want to do what they're doing. And for no reason, I'm not on this team. 
It, it wasn't it wasn't a Doug, you're not good enough because you're just not talented. We want these guys that are better. It wasn't a Doug, you fucked up. And it was just, no, we want Pat to be the captain, that's it. It just didn't resonate right with me. It didn't feel good to me. And it made me upset. Now it's at a point where I'm full blown into content mode. The Face Clan New York house is right around the corner for me. Um, I left college. I have no money in my bank account. Phase Clan is everything to me. It's the franchise I just won the first two majors with. And now I'm starting to make YouTube videos every day and the house is right there. And these dudes are texting me, telling me to come over and make videos with them. Well, you know, sure as shit, if I'm not playing on the phase roster, I'm going to make videos. I'm going to make content. I'm going to do everything I can to be successful. Like this is an awesome opportunity and I'm going to make the most of it. <clears throat> so I go to this house every single day. I start making videos with these guys. We all have so much success. We're having so much fun and I'm just living life to the fullest. But bottom of my mind, every single day, no matter how much subs I gain or how much money I make in a day, the only thing I'm thinking about is playing on the FaZe Clan roster. I made it very clear to Banks. I made it very clear to Tommy. I made it very clear to the owners. I made it very clear to the members. I made it very clear to the players on the team. Very, very clear to the community. All I want to do is play on FaZe. All I want to do is play on this team. I just want to build this team. Nate Shot's still playing. Or he just retired, but I knew Optic was out of the question. This was my baby. This was my team. In my mind, I felt this was the baby that I wanted. This is the thing that I was destined to have and be. And it was right there in front of me, snapped out of my fingers. And every single day, the pain's just getting worse and worse. And it's just hurting more and more every day. I'm not getting explanations. Nobody's giving me a definitive yes or no answer. Maybe it would have been a lot easier if I had some closure. Maybe it would have been a lot easier if it was just a very strict, no, you're not good enough. You can't play in this team. Even though I know that's not true, I'd rather have that than just, uh, uh, this guy, you know, we love this team that we have. Okay, that's all I hear. So let me make the most of my life. Let me make content every single day. Let me just maximize what I have. It's either this or I go back to college and I don't know what the hell I'm going to do in college. Why would I spend $30,000 a semester or a year to, to get a degree when I can just make money making videos and I have this awesome opportunity in front of me. Of course, I'm going to do that, right? So I do that. Next Call of Duty comes out. Black Ops 3, I get on a call, I call FaZe. Hey guys, really want to play this year, man. Like, please, just, I don't know what I need to do. Just let me, like, give, give me a chance. Let me be the subs for the team. Like, let me, I'll do anything. Just let me play in this team. Sorry, Doug. Like, you're, you're, no, like, you're traveling around too much. Like, your head's not in the right place. Like, you just don't want to play. Dude, no, 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 no. Like, I, I, I literally stopped doing everything right now to play. Like, just let me play in this team. Sorry, like, our team's full. Like, the team's really good. Whole another year goes by. Black Ops 3. Well, can I, can I, what could I do? Like, I want to stay in phase, but I want to compete. They're like, yeah, you could play on a team like, I don't know, Enigma 6 because they're not as big of an org. They're not a competitor to us. So they're like working with me in a way, but it's just not like supporting my goals. It's like I could leave phase and that's the one opportunity I have. I could leave phase and I could try to get on a bigger team. But at this point, after not playing for a full year, a bigger team is not going to want a player like me. And if I leave phase, it's throwing away my entire career that I'm in the process of building. So of course I'm going to stick with the career. Of course I'm going to stick with phase clam. And it's not even like a member disrespecting me or anything. It's just, I love FaZe and what they've done for me. But at the same time, I never really understood why I wasn't on this team. It just didn't resonate with me. It wasn't clear to me. And I try, you guys know how direct I am. I try and it just, I can never get a direct answer. And it's so frustrating. So a year goes by, I, I am allowed to play on Enigma 6. So I make YouTube videos talking about how I'm coming back and I'm so excited. But I'm forced to play on one specific team with one specific set of players. The odds are stacked against me. You, you take the best player in Call of Duty, you put them on a specific team of specific players that's not top of the line, bottom of the barrel, mid-tier. You put them on that team, they're going to say mid-tier, bottom of the barrel. Maybe they'll get like a top six placing or something, but they ain't going to win shit. That's just how it goes because I've been around this scene for my entire life. I know how it works. I'm forced to play in situations where I'm not comfortable. I'm not happy. And, and I don't really have a power. It's like I could throw away this career that I'm building that's going to be really successful to follow my dream. Or I could keep building my dream and try to come back. And if it works out, it'll be a miracle and I'd be really happy. But there's a huge chance it won't. And it didn't. So I have to retire again. Infinite Warfare comes out. Call phase again. Black Ops 3, the entire you guys had the same roster. You guys didn't get a single championship. In one year, you guys had me. I went two events in six weeks. You guys know I have what it takes. You guys know how much I love this. You guys know this is what I want. Let me be on this team. Sorry, we're going to stick with this team again. Okay, so all of Infinite Warfare happens again, and the team doesn't win. So now World War II comes around. I'm like, yo, <sighs> call FaZe Clan up again. Hey, FaZe. I really want to play in this team, dude. It's been years now. This has been eating me alive every single night. I literally stood here watching every single FaZe Clan competitive stream of their scrims, thinking, damn, I could be doing what they're doing. When they're failing, I'm thinking, damn, I wouldn't be failing. I would have been able to succeed. Thinking, damn, if you gave me two years of this team, I could have won a championship for this team. You give me the power to make a team, I sure as hell will win because if you look at my track record, every single time I've had the power to make a team, it's always won. It's always had success. It's always been competitive. And I'm just sitting there like, yo, FaZe, it's been two years. Y'all haven't won an event. 
I know I'm this content creator now, which I don't like this label, but I want to be a content creator and a pro. I'm super valuable. Even if you guys aren't winning, if you have me on the team, I can just make this team so much cooler and bigger because none of these guys care. They just want to win and, and make as much salary they could get. And like, yeah, they'll do a little bit of stuff with branding, but they don't really have the same mindset that I have when it comes to consistent content and giving them people a reason to watch you. Like I have that in me. I know I have it in me and I want to show it so bad. Like I want that so bad. Please put me on this team. Y'all haven't won in two years. The worst case scenario, you put me on the team and you're in the same spot, not winning. Just put me on the team, man, please. And you know what they tell me? They tell me, okay. And they tell me they want to meet me in the Hamptons. So I'm like, wow. This is going to be incredible, man. Like I have a really good feeling about this. I didn't really need to sell myself too hard because the last two years I'm begging and I'm just not getting a yes or a no. It's literally a, uh, we're going to try this team out. Like, okay. So then like, what can I do? Can I play in another team? No. I mean, you're in phase. So like you would have to leave phase if you want to play another team. It's like, <laughs> well, I'm not going to do that. Right. Who would like put yourself in my shoes? Who would? So I go to this meeting in this Hamptons and it's the now current CEO of FaZe Clan, Lee Trink's house. He has this gorgeous house out there. Uh, I don't know if Banks was there or not, but I know for sure Rain was there and Tommy was there and uh, Sebastian was there, who at the time was running FaZe. Lee wasn't the CEO at the time, but we're all sitting at this round table in his backyard. Every single most influential person is around this table. Maybe Banks wasn't there. I'm, I'm not 100% sure if he was or not, but the majority of the guys are there. And uh, Sebastian, this guy, he looks me dead in the eyes. I'll never forget this night, guys. Everyone's watching. Everyone's sitting there. Sebastian looks at me and he goes, you better be ready to grind. And I kind of like chuckled because <laughs> I've wanted this more than anything. And it got ripped away from me in 2014 for no reason. Never had an explanation whatsoever. I, it wasn't like all I did was just win at the highest level versus the greatest competition who are still the greatest competition today. The players have not gotten better. They're the exact same players. I know because I played them in World War II last year. It's the same exact shit. The cycle is the same every single year. I've done this my whole life. I know it. You better be ready to grind, he goes. I kind of chuckled. I'm like, dude, of course, man. Like, of course, dude. Of course I'll be ready to grind. You think I'm going to want to be a failure? You think I'm going to want to not be successful? Are you kidding me, man? I've wanted this for years now, dude. Of course I want to win. He's like, okay. And this is very important, guys. Listen to me closely. He looks at me in the eyes. He goes, the team is yours. You are the captain. You have control of the team. If the players on the team, at the time, it was only Zuma and Attach. He goes, if Zuma and Attach do not want you on this team, I'm giving you the permission to drop them and start fresh and make your own team. And I was just the happiest guy in the world, man. I wanted Zuma and Attach to stay on the team. But if they didn't want me, it's cool. I would have just said, okay, guys, like you can go somewhere else. I'm so happy. Like they've had two years they couldn't win. Maybe it's time for a fresh start. All I wanted was this opportunity. I didn't even want to like drop them. I wanted to play with them. But after years of waiting for this, man, finally, I'm getting the most absolute confirmation of being a part of what I want more than anything, which is to win championships for FaZe Clan, make Call of Duty competitive for FaZe Clan, bigger than just Call of Duty, bigger than just esports, making it cool, making it mainstream, making FaZe Clan so much money, making myself so much money, building something together with a unit of people with the collective same mind. I've wanted that for so long and now finally I'm getting this confirmation I was nothing but happy. I almost started crying in front of these guys. I immediately left this meeting, the biggest smile on my face. First thing I do is midnight. I call my dad up. He answers right away. I'm like, dad, I'm finally back on the FaZe Clan team. I've waited years for this, man. I've waited so long to finally be in this position. I've done everything I could to be in this position. I can't leave FaZe, so I, I just, I, I, I'll play. Like, it's a new title. I'm ready. I'm finally on this team again, dad. He's like, son, I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy for you. And... <laughs> Every single day, from that moment on, every single day, conversation started shifting. Every single day, it goes into, oh, well, we're going to talk to Zoom and Attach and let them know. Okay, fine. Oh, Zoom and Attach, uh, they really want to play with replays. How do you feel about that? Oh, well, you know, replays are the champion. In my mind, I really, like, if I have power, I'm not going to pick them up. But you know what? If these players really want replays, then I, I, I'm down. Let's play with Chris. I know he's a great player. I know he's a world champion. I didn't think he'd be the right fit for the team I wanted. But at the same time, I'm easygoing and willing to work with anyone. He's a freaking Call of Duty champion. He's a really nice guy. He's from Long Island. He was 15 minutes away from me. I am so down to play with this dude. Like, I want people to be happy. I don't want people to hate me. I don't want people to dislike me. I don't want people to think I'm a dictator. I want to make things work. Fine. I'm totally down. Let's play with replays. Okay, fine. Another few days go by. Yeah, I don't know. The team, they, it seems like replays attached and Zoom and want to do their own thing. Well, then like, let them do their own thing and let me have this team. Like you promised me, like you, you promised this to me, right? Like, this is what you said. 
let me have this team then. Oh, we'll get back to you. Then another week goes by, another week goes by. Now it's a month. Next thing I know, it's, it's yeah, the phase team's going to be Priest, uh, Replay, Zoom, and Attach. And you understand, like, <laughs> to have my dream, which is I drop out of college, I do everything in my power with zero dollars in my bank account to make a Call of Duty team. I dethrone the biggest and best Call of Duty team of history of Call of Duty. Join FaZe Clan, win the first two majors, destroy the second greatest Call of Duty team of all time in that Optic Dynasty. To have it stripped away from me that same exact night. It's not like I went into a tournament, didn't perform, and like, Doug, you're not good. It was the same exact night, it gets stripped away from me. And then... Again, three years later, every single night I'm going to bed just thinking about how I want to play in this team. Every single night, all I want to do is play in this team. Yeah, I'm making these videos. I'm making money. I'm getting subscribers. It's all cool and shit. But I don't give a damn about all that stuff, man. I just want to win and play Call of Duty. Like, that's all I've really ever wanted. Like, yeah, the money's going to come. I'm not worried about money. Like, I'll work hard in my life. I'll be honest and I'll do the right thing by people. And money's going to be fine. Like, I'm not worried about it, dude. I never was. Even when I, before I even got involved in any of this, before I was even a, a big successful player, I've always felt that way about things. So, to have it stripped away from me in 2014 and have it stripped away from me late in 2017. I was ballistic, man. I lost my mind. I was so angry. I was so upset. I was like, screw this, dude. I'm playing. I'm playing. I don't give a damn what you tell me. I don't give a damn if you kick me from phase. I don't give a damn about any of this shit, man. Are you kidding me? I'm playing again. And they're like, all right, you can make your own team. You can do your thing. So I do my thing. I have next threat. I'm paying $10,000 of all these YouTube videos I make it. I'm paying all this money to salary these bottom of the end players who just don't have the same passion to win. Uh, you know, like I don't want to just categorize every single team that I had because that's not fair. But it was clear to me that the teams I was playing with were not on the same level intensity, did not have the same attention to detail, did not have the same dedication that I had. And for me, I just shut down and I'm too, too frustrated to deal with that shit. I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? Like I'm spending all this money and I'm trying so hard to like further myself and these players just aren't the right fit. And I know they're not the right fit and I know I don't have any credibility because it's been years now and nobody wants to play with someone who didn't play in years, but I'm the same damn dude that I was a few years ago. It's the same exact guy, same player. And you think that if I didn't play for all those years when I was so motivated and so happy and so excited to grind every single day, when I had success, you think when I'm sitting here every single day spending hours watching scrims on Twitch TV of these phase players playing and not winning, you think it's not eating me alive? You think it's not making me go crazy inside? You think it's not making me want to win even more? The fact I even made it back into the pro league in World War II was honestly the hardest and most happiest accomplishment I've ever had in my life. Like way more than winning a championship, way more than winning any of the championships I won because the amount of stress that I had every single day for years since 2014 and then even in 2017 when I wanted to be on phase and they told me I was and I wasn't, the amount of anger and frustration that I had every single day was eating me alive inside and the fact that I had absolutely zero help. I'm talking like like you take you could take any other player and they'd probably in a better spot than me. I had zero help. I was paying so much money a month just to have anything go for me. Like players want money, so I gave them freaking money, dude. Like I I want this more than anybody. Like I'm sitting here every single day for years trying to play on this team, trying to play on this team, trying to play on this team, not throw away my career that I'm building that could be really successful while also wanting to do what I truly love and not getting an explanation for why I'm not playing on this team anymore. All I want to do is do it. And I, I'm sitting here and I make the Call of Duty Pro League. Like, dude, if you give me a decent team, it would, it would not be even something I thought twice about. I would be like, okay, great. Like, we really, congratulations, guys. Like, this is what we're supposed to do. But you give me nothing, and I'm able to turn that into making the league, man? That, to me, is always going to be, like, the most proud accomplishment because it was just such a struggle, dude. Every single day. I got on beginning of the year in World War II. I was playing with Ricky, Mir, and Proof. Ricky uh, was good, but but Proofy and Mir just did not have the, the dedication and the drive to win. We would play scrims every day for three days straight and i'm not even kidding you guys i wouldn't even win a map i wouldn't even win a map in scrims my team would not win a single map do you understand how frustrating it is for a player who's world starring the greatest players in call of duty history is winning championships under the coolest org ever to go from that with no explanation to nothing to not winning a map when it's not even like i'm pulling up the scoreboard and i'm quadruple negative it's like my team is just clearly not in the right headspace and they're clearly not capable of winning and they clearly don't understand it. Or, or maybe it's just a mental health thing. Maybe it's just you're not focused in on the moment on just being the best that you can be, which is another huge part of being a, pet, a competitive player. But dude, to, like, to go from that in the beginning of the year to be able to play the game more than anybody because nobody wanted to play with me to make it into the Call of Duty League was an incredible achievement to me, man. 
And I am so proud of myself for that. And I am so glad that I was able to do that, man. Like I just, here's how I see it, man. Replays didn't play for two years going into World War II. And that's ultimately who took my spot on FaZe Clan. And he, the reason he got on a FaZe Clan is because Zoom and Attach loved him and they had a great history with him. And they wanted to bring him back from retirement so he could play with them again. Zoom and Attach are great players. Replays is a great player. What happened? They ended up winning a tournament, a major in World War II. Like if Replays could do it, I could do it too. If this man, like who did not play for two years, could come back and play with some good players like Zoom and Attach and win, you give me some good players, I could do the exact same thing. But you put me on situations where I'm just playing with players who do not share the same passion, who are not going to want to believe in me because now I didn't play in a few years and they're not going to, you know, put in the own personal ground and they're not going to be the best versions of themselves. And I know that and it's so clear to me and I have no say in this whatsoever because I have no power, no influence, nothing. You know how frustrating that is for someone? That, that has had success, that knows what it takes to win, to have to play with that and have to deal with that, all because I didn't want to throw in my career that I was building with YouTube and content creation, which I don't expect anyone, if they were in my shoes, to do either. It's just the hardest thing because I'm just way too persistent and way too passionate and way too dedicated to let some bullshit stop me from my dreams, man. And I'm speaking up about it because this has hurt me every single day for five freaking years, man. Every single night I go to bed, no matter how great my day is, no matter how much money I made in a day, I've had days where I made a lot of money on a day. You know how much, you know how crazy that is? Like I could buy a car in one day of some money I make. You know how amazing that is? You know how like, special that is? Like I don't take that shit for granted, man. But even with all of that, dude, even with the nicest, the best, the happiest moments of my life, I still go to bed at night and I just think about, yo, what if I was still on that FaZe Clan team? What if they didn't drop me? What if they kept me on the team? What would FaZe Clan be today? What would it have been? What could it have been? And, and why didn't I ever get an explanation? Why was I never told the specific reason why? It wasn't a talent thing. It wasn't a personality thing. It was nothing to me in my head. I don't understand it. Imagine like having the best moments of your life, man. Like I came from absolutely nothing. I came from literally freaking nothing. I've worked for everything I've had in my life, man. And I'm in situations today where I could like, I could like, I don't know, like I could conquer the world. I could travel the world. I could do anything I want, but it doesn't even matter because all I really want is just to be a competitive Call of Duty player because I know for damn sure you put me on the sticks versus a really good freaking team in the grand finals and you give me a good group of guys that gets to the finals. I'm telling these guys, we have gotten way too far. I know how hard this is. I know how exclusive this opportunity is. I know how much talent there is and we're in this position right now. There is no way I'm walking home with second place. It's just not in my DNA. It's my track record. It's my history. I can't lose. I can't do it because I want it so much more than anybody. And that feeling I have resonates with my teams. And that's the reason why my teams won every single final that I've been in every single time. Now, who knows? Maybe in the future, I'll have some great teams and I'll get second, but I've had a perfect track record and I'm, I'm so proud of that. And I'm so happy about that. And I know I'm not the best player and I know I'm not the best killer, the best slayer, the best this, the best that, the best whatever, but I know for damn sure I'm an awesome teammate and you need me when the pressure's on, you need me when all the marbles are on the table, when everything is at stake, there's no way, no way I'm going to lose because I can't. I just, I, I just want it so bad. I want it more than anything. I want it more than any amount of money. I want it more than any amount of fame, any amount of success, any nice cars, boats, yachts, you know, healthy, happy family, whatever. Like I am willing to do anything if I believe in it. And I believe that I'm an awesome Call of Duty player. I believe any single time that it came down to it, I always came through and I'll still come through today because the passion I had back then, if you think for a second, after all of these years, every single night, going to sleep, having this subliminal thought in my head of being upset and being frustrated and being worked up and then going on Twitter and seeing internet trolls saying that you're a trash player and then having people who make decisions for your career as a Call of Duty player actually believing those internet trolls, you understand how frustrated that makes me? If you think after all of that, every single night of me having to deal with that shit for years, five freaking years, if you don't think that I have the same passion, if not more, today to win, then I don't know what business you're in, dude. I really don't. That's why I'm so confident you put me on any roster, even as a sub player. I don't care if it's the five greatest players in the game. I bring something to a team that nobody else has, and I will be on that starting roster because I believe in myself. I've looked up to so many of the greats. I've looked up to Tiger. I've looked up to LeBron. I've looked up to Tom. I've looked up to all these great athletes, and they all share the same thing in common. They always say, if you really work for something, 
You put in the time to something, you're going to get rewarded. LeBron James always was the greatest in his craft since day one. Tom Brady wasn't, but they both had the same path. They both had the same end destination, greatness, the greatest of all time. I don't know if I'll be the greatest of all time, but I know that I want to build a Call of Duty franchise. I wanted to do it with FaZe. I want to build a Call of Duty franchise into the biggest and most successful franchise in the world, kind of like Jerry Jones and the Cowboys, because I know I can do that. I know I'm a great enough player where I can win championships. I know better than anyone how to make content. Thank you for FaZe Clan for teaching me that and supporting me the whole way through when it came to content but when it came to competitive call of duty i just never understood the reason why i never was able to play on the team after all i did was just win a championship and then another championship dude it's just five years of built up frustration man every single night eating me alive dude and i just could not hold it anymore it's just it, it, the only way for me to move on from this situation and to like feel better internally is to speak out and to say these thoughts to you guys. And I don't know if this is going to come off in a sad, sappy, annoying, egotistical, cocky way or whatever the case may be. I don't even give a damn, dude. All, I hope you guys see me for what I am. And that's a dude who just really cares about the people around him and just wants to build really cool, successful things with people, man. Like all I've ever wanted was to, 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 to build a competitive Call of Duty roster into something bigger than Call of Duty and to win while I did it too. And <laughs> Winning is freaking awesome, dude. It is awesome, man. I can't live without that feeling, man. I need to have success. I need to have hard work. I need to have moments in my life where I'm just going through all the adversity in the world and I need to pull through and I need a good supporting cast around me to do that. I can't do that alone. I can't do that with losers. I can't do that with people who don't share that mindset, man. I dealt with that in World War II. I didn't have the same mindset as any of the teams. It was the hardest year of my life. I was going through so much shit. Mentally, it was hard for me to, to, to concentrate and focus at times because just knowing the fact that every single night I'm going to bed and I'm not on this FaZe Clan team when I'm promised it and then I'm trying to make the most of every horrible situation I'm in and just the players just don't share that mindset is the most frustrating thing in the world. You could take this as me scapegoating players or teammates for my own actions. I don't give a damn, dude. I know how I feel. I know what, what it takes to win and I'm just too frustrated to let this hold me back anymore, man. So the only way for me to really move on from this is to just say it to you guys and let you guys take it for what it is, man. It just, it just hurts me. Imagine having a dream and making it a reality and having it taken away from you. And then every single night having that eat you alive for three years. And then hearing the words, you have control of this roster. You control our team. You could clean it. You could keep it. You can do whatever you want. And then having it taken away from you again. I don't know. For someone like me who cares too much about competitive Call of Duty, it just, I can't live with it, dude. I can't. It hurts. I'm heartbroken, man. It sucks. And I, it's such a conflict for me because it's like at the very same time as upset I am, I also love FaZe. And I also love the members in FaZe. And I love what they stand for. And I love the things that they taught me. And I love the thing and the direction that FaZe is going in. But it's like, dude, why is there no transparency with this, man? And guys, it's not like I've never had internal talks with this. It's not like I hate anybody in FaZe Clan. I, freaking, I love FaZe Clan, dude. FaZe Clan is life. But like, I just, I never will get the explanation that I ever needed or wanted. I'll never get that closure. The only thing I can do now is just move on. And I just really felt like this decision and this, this move that I'm going to make, I'm going to play in a franchise next year. I don't care if I'm a bench player. I don't, I don't, I don't really, it doesn't matter to me. I will work harder than anyone and I'll be on a starting roster and I'm going to win championships. I'm going to make a Call of Duty franchise, biggest, coolest, most successful franchise in the entire league and make it as big as any other NFL, NBA, MLB sport, because that's really what I felt I was always destined for and I was never able to do with them for whatever reason, man. And it will always eat me alive at night, every single night, because I just thought it was such a wasted opportunity. Um, I, I really idolized Nate Shot. I really idolized that that format that he had with making streams, making YouTube videos, making content around your team. And I know it better than anyone now. I'm 25 years old. I'm in the prime of my life. I'm in the best headspace of my life. And I know exactly what needs to be done in order to make a franchise successful and in order to win in Call of Duty, which I'll just let my play do the talking for that. But uh, I just really hope you guys can understand. I'm, I've never seen anyone else in a situation like this before. I try to look at other situations in other sports and other esports. I can't find one, dude. I don't know. I don't want to pin this on FaZe. I, I don't I don't want to say it's their fault. I don't want to say it's my fault. I just think this is such a unique situation and I don't I don't think there's a solution to it other than like I have to play in a franchise. I have to do what I'm destined to do and that's play in a Call of Duty franchise, make it the coolest thing in the world, and try. Like the the worst thing that happens is that I fail. And I could completely live with that as long as I gave it 110%. And that's what I preach to you guys all the time. If you want something, you relentlessly, aggressively, persistently attack that with 110%. You must have the most cleanest, honest, truthful motives inside in your heart. And you got to make that super honest and super transparent to whoever you're working with.
that's where I'm going to wrap this up, man. I hope you guys really learned something from this. The three things I want people to take away from this video is really how much I care about this, the, the situation that I've been through, and for franchises looking at this, I hope you believe in me, and I hope you just see that if you if you take a chance on me, I turn I turn lemons into lemonade, man. I, I take the worst situation, and I make it the best possible, everything that I do in my life, man. Um, so... There it is. I feel better. I tried recording this a few times and I cried too much. So I had to stop and I just had to like w take a second and film this again. But um, clearly you guys could tell this means a lot to me. And I hope you guys could share this with anyone that you know. Franchises, players, uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just share it because this story, I hope you guys could somewhat sympathize with it because it's, it's been very difficult. Although I made this great career in content creation. I made this money. Money really isn't shit at the end of the day, guys. Like money is awesome. You need money to get food and pay for bills and have all this stuff and material things are great but your passion is everything your dream is everything always stand up for yourself don't take shit from people if people don't agree with you respectfully decline and respectfully disagree with them walk the other direction but you got to do what you're passionate about i'm passionate about building a call of duty franchise and i'm gonna do it that's it i hope you guys are joining me on this process hope you guys can follow me through with it this doesn't mean that i hate phase i love phase i love everything phase did for me but i have to tell you guys this experience i have to tell you guys how i felt I've had m multiple conversations behind closed doors. It never leads to anything. And I'm just done done holding in my emotions. Like this is just something that's on my conscience every single night. And now that's being put out there, I'm just going to feel 20 times better moving forward. I'm in a great headspace every day. I'm living my best life. I feel amazing every day. And I am so ready to conquer the season. And I can't wait to get started. Thank you all for watching. Comment down below what you guys think. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you guys are new. It's been your boy Doug Sensomarin. And I'm out, guys. Peace.